What up, people? This will be a quick one because, once again, I have no co-host. And so the Dallas Cowboys win 24-17 against the San Francisco 49ers. San Francisco jumped from a 14 to nothing lead. Uh, Blaine Gavard's the uh, quarterback keeper stuff that they were running in the first half. Um, it, w- it didn't confuse Dallas, but they um, there was a lot of misdirection, and it, they got some they got they got some yards. It helped out their running game a lot. Gabbert was able to throw up the middle a lot. Um, that was something you can do against the Cowboys. You can throw up the middle. I think what stopped the what ended up stopping the um, quarterback keeper stuff is one Gabbert was getting hit. But two, they use Sean Lee as like a spy type of deal in a lot of those keepers. So it wasn't like he was able to get like a lot of yards. Matter of fact, um, let me see. They don't have the, the running stats here. I'm looking at the run, running stats as, I, um, as I'm on my computer. I think Gabbert only had like 22 yards rushing. Yeah, Gabbard had 27 yard rushing. So they ended up stopping that aspect of their game before he started running, before it, it became a thing. Uh, Hyde ran for 74 yards and got a touchdown. <clears throat> it doesn't seem like a lot of yards, but it seems like those, rush, those rushes got first downs and were very important in drives. Um, For the Cowboys, Dak had 245 yards, two touchdowns. Ezekiel Elliott was a beast. He's figuring out how to run up the middle. Uh, Me and Mignon said around when we did the first one of these that he doesn't look very good up the middle. They need to run him in space. They're not listening, so the Cowboys are going to do what they do. And Zeke is... Figuring it out, and he's learning how to read holes and get there quicker. And um, it was mentioned on the broadcast today that it's slowing down for him a little bit. The game is so that's a good thing. And a lot of his rushing yards were when the Cowboys had the lead and they were trying to protect the lead, like sort of what they were they've always done when uh, Emmett was playing. And Morris had 34 yards, seven carries. Um, let's see, in reception, in, re- in receiving, Beasley, solid game. Didn't really look like as far as the stats go because he only had three receptions, but 66 yards, and they were first downs. That last reception that he got was uh, basically iced the game. I think it was for 20 yards. And um, when I have 47, Terrence Williams had 44 and a touchdown. Butler had 41 and a touchdown. And he was really the uh, X factor in the game because he was, he took the place of Dez. He ran all of Dez's routes and he did pretty good. So the Cowboys win that game. Um, it wasn't at a, it wasn't pretty at all. It wasn't pretty the whole game. It wasn't a pretty game. At spots, there are still issues defensively that the Cowboys have. You can still run up the, you can still run up the middle on them. You can still throw up the middle on them. Their their, in their defense in the middle is still weak to me. But uh, they're figuring it out. The coaching between the coaching difference between. When Dak is in there and when Romo is in there is, and when I'm talking, when I talk to this about this point with other people, they say that Dak is doing the same thing Romo is doing as far as calling audibles out of plays. Um, that might be true, but it just seems like with what they're calling and what he's calling. There's not a lot of mistakes, and there's not a lot of stupid throws. He did have a near pick today, but he still hasn't thrown an interception yet. 
And I just think the coaching is a lot better. And the play calling is a lot better with him in the game. I don't know what that means when Romo comes back. Because they're probably, I don't think they're going to have Romo just sit out when he's healthy. I think they're going to put Tony back in there. And I don't know how the play calling is going to be different. But I've always kind of said that they that uh, Jason Garrett isn't really, he puts Romo in really, really stupid situations for the sake of big plays and numbers. And it just seems like with this, with Dak, they're not putting him in like really bad situations to um to run this thing to run this team. Seems like they're putting him in situations where they're still not asking him a lot to do much versus with Romo, they're asking him to win the game on every play. So the biggest thing that I can see so far is the coaching. Because every because statistically this was an average game, but it still was good because no one is asking him to do much, and there's not a lot of dumb things happening. So, anyway, pushing wild blackout. At some point, I'm gonna get a co-host again, but uh, until then, I'll do these short ones. Anyway, later. <laughs>